What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be looking at something special. We're going to start out on map editing. Now we're going to start out easy, but still it's an important step. What we're going to do is take an existing map and add in new super unique monsters to it, along with regular monsters as well. And this will help you get familiar with some of the tools that you need for bigger modifications to maps, which we'll touch on in a later video. So we're gonna jump right into this. So we're in our Diablo 2 Resurrected mods directory. And if you don't know why we have this folder or why we have all these other folders or why there's a .mbq folder in here, then check out some of my earlier videos. I'll link those in the description below. But anyway, we have this super uniques mod and super uniques.mpq. The mod info.json just sets up the folders there. So that's all standard, nothing new there. And we have our data, global, Excel directory, as always. We have our mon preset and super uniques.txt. So these are the two files that we'll be modifying here. And then if we go back out, we have this tiles directory. And this is something we haven't seen yet. In this tiles directory, we have act one, caves, and then these DS1 files. Now I also have these backup files, which I made, but we can ignore those completely. It's these DS1 files that we're concerned with. So what these are, are the map data for the various preset maps in the game. And this den ent and den ent2 are essentially the entrance to the den of evil in the first area of Diablo 2 Resurrected. And the reason that there's two files here is because there's two different orientations of the den. There's one where it's facing off to the left and one where it's facing off to the right. And these are two distinct maps, though only one will ever get placed in the actual game. And unfortunately, that's controlled by code. We can't actually modify that. And now's a good time to talk about the different types of maps that there are in Diablo 2 Resurrected. So you have three maps, essentially. You have outdoor maps, maze maps, and preset maps. Now, outdoors and maze maps are generated randomly, and we'll see that a bit more in a later video, but we're really concerned with the preset maps. Now, these can exist in an outdoor area or in a maze area, but that, as I said, that's all controlled by code. So this den of evil entrance is just added to an outdoor area. And while we can't modify the rest of that outdoor area, we can modify this preset tile. And finally, if we go back out to our data folder, we have our local lang strings and our monsters.json. And this is just so I can create a brand new super unique with its own name. So we've added the name in here to the monsters.json in our strings folder, as we've seen in past videos. So first things first, let's have a look at this super uniques.txt. Now, this file is fairly straightforward. Again, check the data guide. That's the .mht file in the data global Excel directory. And you can see it here in CastView, this mht file here. That contains essentially a description of all the different fields and columns in each of the files in this directory. So back to the super uniques.txt. So we have our list of super uniques here. You can see Cold Crow, Treehead, Griswold, the Countess, etc, etc. But we want to create a brand new super unique. So if we come down to the bottom here, I've added a new row. Now all I've done is taken the first row, Bishy Bosch, and pasted it in here. And we've renamed it to Liara the Trader. So we're going to keep the super unique and name columns to be the exact same. And this will be what we reference later in that monsters.json. We then set the class of this monster. So I've set it to Corrupt Rogue 1. And that's just an easy enough monster from one of the first areas. So we don't want it to be too overpowered considering that we're putting it outside the den of evil. Now this class column just references the monstats.txt. And if we open that up, we can see corrupt rogue one here, and that's just the dark hunter class of corrupt rogue. So it's this ID column that we're referencing in the class column of the super uniques.txt. Now back here to the super uniques.txt, we have this next column, which is the hard coded index. Just make sure that's incrementing and not a duplicate of an existing hard-coded ID. 
so I've chosen 66 because that's straight after 65. We then have our various mod columns, so these are the modifiers on the monster, and these come from the monumods.txt, so if you open up that file you can see what each of these numbers actually refers to. We then have the min group and max group, so we don't want her in a group, we just want her on her own, so they're, they're both set to zero. We then have auto positions, stacks and replaceable. We're going to ignore those, but you can look up in the data file guide what they are. Auto position is essentially just the monster spawns in a radius around where you place the actual monster tile. And if you turn that off, they will spawn exactly where you place the monster. We then have the U-trans columns. These are just color transformations for the monster. Uh, they're not exactly simple. So I won't cover them in detail here, but there are a few guides on the internet which go over how this is actually calculated. And then we have the treasure class column. So I've set it to act one, U item A, and likewise for nightmare and hell. And that's it. That's our new super unique monster set up. So now we just have to get them into the actual game. And that's where the mon preset.txt comes in. So you can see here we have acts and what to place. So we have act one, we've placed Geed, Kane, Akara, chickens, rogues, etc., etc. And if we come all the way down to the bottom, corpse fire is the last entry in this file for you, but I've added in two new ones. So I've added in our super unique and then a brute two. And again, this just comes from the ID column of that monstats.txt. And something important to note here is you have to group all the acts together. So if I had these columns taken out and added at the bottom of act five, for example, it would not work. So you have to make sure that the acts go in ascending order. And another thing to note is that you cannot reference presets across acts. So that means I can't reference this Atma in act one. Instead, I'd need to create a new entry here with act one and the place as Atma, and then I can reference it in act one. So all we have to do is insert two rows here between Warov and Corpse Fire and put in Liara the Traitor and Brute 2. And this Brute 2 just allows us to place a specific monster in our preset map. Now you could just open the levels.txt and scroll over to the monsters there in each of the level areas and add Brute 2 there and then those monsters would spawn in that area. But we just want to add one monster to the area. So one single solitary Brute who isn't special in any way. They're not a super unique. They're just a regular monster. So we have our two entries there. That's pretty much all we have to do with regards to these text files. We will, however, quickly go to the monsters.json that I mentioned earlier in your data local lang strings, and we'll add in a new entry for Liara the Trader. So our key is just Liara the Trader, same as we had in the super unique.txt. We've chosen an ID that's way out. It's 70,000, so it's not used already by the game. And then all our translations are just the exact same thing because I'm not translating this into different languages since we're just using this for the video's purposes. Now, our next thing will be editing these DS1 files. And this is where we see a new tool. However, before that, I wanna point something out. If we modify these DS1 files, we need to create this combined DS1.bin. And you see this is zero kilobytes here, but if we open up cask view, we can see in our tiles act one, we have a combined ds1.bin and it is not zero kilobytes. So essentially what this is, is a cached file of all these ds1 files combined. And this is what the game actually reads. And we don't want it to read that because then it won't read our modified DS1 files. So what we do is if I just delete that, we create a new text document and we just name it combine DS1.bin. And there we go. We got a new text document that we've renamed to this combined DS1.bin. It's zero kilobytes big. So when the game looks at that, it doesn't find any of the DS1s inside, and so it loads the actual DS1 files. And this is something that you need to do for every act. So you can see Act 1 has a combined DS1.bin, Act 2 has one, Act 3, Act 4, 
etc and expansion as well. So if you want to modify any of the DS1 files in one of these different acts, you need to replace that combined DS1.bin. And since we're modifying act one, we've replaced the combined DS1.bin in act one. So now we can actually edit these DS1 files and have the results reflected in the game. So we're having a look at Paul's Windows DS1 editor. Now this is a fantastic tool, which is from the old school Diablo 2 days, but it still works in Diablo 2 Resurrected. And I'll link this tool in the description below, but it's available in multiple places across the internet. However, you probably want the complete edition, which has this DS1 edit loader, which makes things a little easier. It stops you having to create these batch files to load different DS1s or rely on command prompt or other tools. But first things first, we've created a new super unique and this tool doesn't know anything about that super unique. So we need to go into the data folder and this object.txt. This needs to be opened with Excel or whatever table editor that you're using. And you can see it here. We have different act entries for everything. We have different IDs and um, load of other columns. You can check out the official documentation for more description on these, but we just wanna come down to act one to where we start seeing question marks. And essentially these two entries were question marks as well. So corpse fire was the last entry. And all we want to do is put in our Liara the traitor and our brute two here. So these are the values that came from our mon preset.txt. You can see Liara the traitor, brute two, Liara the traitor, brute two. So that's just saying ID 47 is this Liara the traitor, ID 48 is brute two, and we'll notice a few other things. So we'll see here 49 to 58 are blank. So those don't actually reference anything. But what we're gonna do in a minute is we're gonna add number 53. And essentially what happens is when a DS1 file has one of these IDs, it'll either relate it back to the mon preset.txt. So we have an entry for 47 and 48. It'll go, the R the trader, and it'll look in the mon presets, find the enemy, and reference the super uniques.txt, etc., and spawn it correctly. But if it has nothing, so if it hits 53 and it can't find anything in that mon presets, it uses that ID and goes over to the mon stats.txt. So it'll go to this file, look up the hard coded ID, and it'll find 53 here and see that it's Goatman 1. So it'll spawn this monster, a Moon Clan Goatman. And that's just an interesting little tidbit. So we didn't need to actually add this brute two here. We could have just referenced it by the ID. But the thing is, if we then went and added more monsters in here in that mon presets, we might override that 53. And then it wouldn't end up spawning the monster. It would end up spawning whatever we fill in in here in the description which could be completely different boss. So that's why I wouldn't really do that. I'd rely on the mon presets and I wouldn't rely on the hard coded ID to reference monsters, but you wouldn't probably reference normal everyday monsters in the DS1 files that much anyway. It's just an interesting tidbit to keep in mind. So anyway, we've updated this object.txt We've added in our two new preset entries, and now we're going to actually launch this DS1 edit loader.exe. Now this essentially will load our DS1 files into another little kind of graphical display of that DS1 file. So we'll go to add, we want to select our two .ds1 files. So that's den ent and den ent 2ds one and we just click open. So you can see they load in here. We have a level type ID, level preset definition. And essentially what we're gonna do is go to run now. And this will run Paul's actual Windows DS1 edit tool, which you can see here. So we can zoom in with our scroll bar. You can see this viz5. We'll touch on all of that kind of stuff, these teleporters, etc., later. But just to quickly go over it, we're in terrain select mode at the moment. If you hit tab, we go into object select mode. So you can see these tiki torches are now selectable and we go into pathing mode if we hit tab once more. So you can cycle through the modes by just hitting tab. 
Now keep in mind we loaded two different files, you can see them there in the background, but how do we actually switch between them? Well, that's with the numbers. So if we hit one, we're in the first map. If we hit two, we cycle to the second map. And you can see they're both just different orientations of the den of evil. So what are we actually going to do with these files? Well, we want to insert our new objects. So enemies are objects in this. So keep that in mind. Terrain is something different that we'll touch on later. There's a bit more to it with Diablo 2 Resurrected because you now have JSON files as well. But the JSON files just control kind of Resurrected's graphics and what's represented in Resurrected. But Collision and the legacy graphics are still handled by the DS1 file. So editing scenery is a bit more tricky, but we'll touch on that in a different video. For now, objects are enough. So how do we actually insert a new object? Well, you hit the insert key on your keyboard. So you can see here it spawns in as Geed. We don't want Geed, so we can right click that. And because we edited our object.txt, we can scroll down and you can see here Liar the Trader and Brute 2. So if we select Liar the Trader, hit enter, she should spawn there. Now let's add a Brute 2 in here. So if we scroll down, Brute 2. Now remember I also said we're going to add in a Goat Man. So we'll come over here, hit insert again, scroll down and we'll select 53, which was that Moon Clan Goat Man. And you can see it here, it has a question mark. It doesn't know what it is, but it has that ID of 53. And just for fun, we're gonna copy the Tiki torches. So I'm just using Control and C when I select them and paste them in just beside. So we have double torches here. We know that that means our DS1 edits have worked. And we'll save that with Control and S. And now we'll go over to the other map and we'll do the exact same thing. So we'll insert our three objects, modify them. So we have uh, 53 here. We have uh, Liara there, and we have our Brute down here. And let's double our torches. There we go, save again. And we'll just go back into terrain mode, hit escape, hit save all and quit. And we can close this up now. Now back in our Act 1 Caves folder, we can see our DS1s here and we can also see the backup files. So essentially when you save, it also creates backup so that if you make some mistake, you can go to one of these backups instead and just restore your progress. But that's everything we have to do. So let's jump in game and see what the result is. So we have our launcher, we go into game settings as always, we add our command line arguments to load this mod and we just play. So we'll create a new palette for this and we'll name them. Oh, what's that? Please subscribe. It is just hitting that little button down below and everyone who subscribes helps me out a ton. And I'd like to thank you all for your huge support so far and it keeps me creating these videos to help out the community. Enough of that anyway, we're in game and we're gonna go find the Den of Evil. All right, so we found our Den of Evil here. If we run down, we should see a Brute, a Goat Man. So both of them are here. We can see our Moon Clan and Liar the Trader. So they all spawned in correctly and I don't think we're gonna be able to kill them. Level one, uh, I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh, there's the goat man down. Brute down and Liara now. So you can see that she's magic resistant. That's the mod column in that super unique.txt. And that's just a little nice way to have a super unique in the preset tile. So again, preset tiles are everything that isn't outdoors or mazes. So mazes would be things like caves, catacombs, etc. Presets would be things like the towns and Dariel's chamber. Uh, the Den of Evil entrance, uh, the entrance to the Forgotten Tower, for example, in the Black Marsh, or many of the boss chambers, etc. So there's lots of different presets, and you can edit those and add your own objects to them, and your own super uniques, bosses, etc. So that's it for today. As always, I'll put these files on my GitHub, which is linked down in the description. So if you want to try it out, just grab the files from there. 
and as always do remember to hit like and subscribe it does help me out a ton and helps me keep creating these videos and next time we'll dive into mapping a bit more with creating our own new maps and new areas so stay tuned for that and i'll catch you guys next time